Hello, uh, welcome everyone to the virtual uh, Expertise Tech Talk interview for the IT leadership community. Um, my name is Richard Harrison from Expertise Recruitment and I'm delighted to say we've got Ethan Patel um, with us today, who's a very experienced CIO, uh, has been in the CIO Top 100 list on, on several occasions and worked for big brands such as uh, WH Smith and Arcadia, M&S, uh, Sainsbury's and, and a few other organisations. So thanks for to join us um, and for those that don't know it's a channel to, to sort of uh, help um, uh, other people to learn from inspirational IT leaders um, about their journey uh, to, to the top and some of the things that they, they view as important so thanks very much for joining us uh, Keita and um, yeah so um, just just a quick introduction if you if you could. Sure thanks Richard thanks for having me um, so Ketan Patel I've been in the in the tech industry for 25 years, worked with a number of retailers, as you just articulated. Um, my my background was I was always from a, from a young age uh, interested in electronics and uh, and technology. Uh, strangely, I I um, did my A levels and and studying in accountancy and and law, and and soon found out that was really boring for me. So uh, hence went back into technology, and here I am, 25 years down the line. So, so tell us a little about your your story, how you got sort of to where you are. What was your journey sort of through the ranks? Sure. I, I, I started, I guess, very early days of kind of point of sale. Uh, that that was where I cut my teeth um, into. Uh, and it just happened by chance, if I'm honest with you, Richard. I, I was a uh, in Arcadia. I was a part time uh, working in uh, uh in top shop in uh, Oxford Circus, it was the first early days of point of sales and back end systems. Uh, showing my age, it was back in the days of DOS, um, and uh, I got involved with implementing that that project. Um, that then gave me the experience around how you implement projects, how you know how technology was enabling the automation of of retailing, uh, and and that then continue to progress. So I went on from that to be a project manager, from a project manager to a uh, a, a leader in, in technology and, and service. Uh, and then the career carried on. So my, my view was always how do we, with the mantra of where I started, how, how do I really use technology to better a business outcome? And that's kind of followed me all the way through my career as I've progressed. Fantastic. So interesting about the dynamic you face in, in board meetings these days and, you know, has that has that changed in in, uh, in in recent years? You know, what sort of dynamics do you face as a, as a, to a board level CIO? I think the 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 key um, changes in, in board dynamics has been where technology used to be a bit of a service um, aspect to a any business. It's moved now to a how do I how do I use technology to uh, increase bottom line and top line profitability, and therefore you're you're expected to be much more commercial and therefore much more in tune with the business operations and how then and articulating the story of how technology can help make that that business more efficient and therefore more profitable, and and I think that is becoming more and more. Uh, of the the key skills that are required as a as a CIO, um, as opposed to you know making sure that the lights are on and the projects are delivering. This is really about how I how does that person in the corner who really is second to the CEO across every area of the business, how is that person going to help us drive commerciality and success of the business? And would you say there was a, a moment, a sort of proudest moment, if you like, where you kind of where the board sort of looked at you and almost gave you the nod or the pat on the shoulder? Uh, there is. You, I think that's becoming, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you get both sides. You get, when it doesn't work, you always get the, the wrong type of focus. Uh, and, and you get, you. I think it's about the PR element. So I I have seen, and certainly where you, you can demonstrate a real correlation between what you've delivered and the outcomes from a business point of view. Um, that that really is powerful, and 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 yes, you know, I've been fortunate with the boards I've worked with where they've they've kind of really recognised that, um, and and they've seen the correlation and they've seen the journey, 
and they've seen what it could unlock. And whilst the journey may have been painful at the end, they, there's always a bit of a recognition that it's. And, and if there isn't, then, you know, I, I'll make sure that I've, I've labelled the point a little bit as well. Absolutely fantastic. So what, what are you passionate about? What am I passionate about? Traveling. I, I love traveling. I, I'm a, I'm a yeah. bit of a foodie. Um, I'm passionate when it comes to work. So that's on a personal level, on, on a uh, on a work level. I'm passionate about nurturing people. I love to see people grow and 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 excel. I've I've worked with a number of people in my in my uh, career who have now gone on to be really successful IT leaders and directors. Um, and I think for me that that gives me the greatest satisfaction if i'm honest with you richard the uh, helping others to move in their career and and learn from my mistakes and experiences is probably the, the the biggest kind of passion i've got because i think uplifting just it's the biggest gift you can give to your teams right it is if you can give them a bit of your experience uh, and you know again it's a bit like it's a it's a bit like you know um having kids you know you want to give them your experience you want them to do better than you and and, and i'll take the same approach with uh, uh people i've worked with as well and of course the the teams that you you know you have around you you kind of live and, and die if you like by by the quality of those of the team you build how, how have you gone about building those those teams and what sort of attributes have you looked for in people Sure. I, I think the the attributes from a technology point of view have to be, and, and certainly in this day and age, have to be a lot more business focused. So, you know, come back to the point I made around, you know, being commercial. I, I expect the tech teams to be, you know, business partners. They they need to understand how the business works. Um, they need to understand how what they do on a day to day basis contributes towards the business. I think bringing that to life is really important. So I I see my role I, I, the, the phrase is is bandied about quite a bit, but I do really see myself as a bit of a servant leader. For me, it's about how do I enable my teams to be able to be the best and deliver what their their ultimately their customers uh, and and their colleagues need from them, and and therefore nurturing them is, is really important for me. Equally, it's making sure that they are up to you know, on a day to day basis, they can deliver. And if they don't deliver, then, you know, equally, we will be having tough conversations. But it's really important that they are, they all see that their hard work leads to success for themselves personally and the, and the business. Equally, you know, we, we do want a high performing team. And, and I, I make, you know, I, I'm quite straight talking. So when I when I stand in front of my teams and say we we won't accept stragglers, we don't. Uh, and I think you, we have to, you know, we all have to be fair to all colleagues uh, that we have that we address the stragglers and we we excel the the people who really do perform. Yeah. Any killer interview questions that you've uh, you've come come up with over the years? I I think the the one of the best interview questions I, I was given myself, and, and I often use this in, in people, is um, apart from your normal, you know, uh, what are your strengths or your weaknesses, etc. Somebody said to me, if 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 you saw this business as your your family, which is what you should do. One of the best questions I've had was, where do you see your role in that family? And I think the the reason why I really like that question is you you start talking about the psychology of a family. There's a hierarchy. There's people who support each other. There's a role that you play, and and it's in context to every family. So every family is different. And I think it makes you also think about the organisation you're in. And and that interview question is really testing. Have you really learned about us as an organisation, our culture, our ways of working, where you would fit in, and therefore how you would make a difference? Fantastic question. I think yeah. there's a there's a it's a loaded question, but I think it's a great question. Yeah, no, it's a good. I haven't heard that one before. But I think that's a fantastic question. But what about role models for you as you were kind of building your career? Were there any sort of standout role models, particularly, or things you learned from those people? Um, yeah, I, I've had a couple of role models actually. I, I ironically, one of them's been a headhunter um, that I've had. Um, he he's been in the tech industry for twenty years. 
Um, he's always been, the reason why he's been a bit of a role model is he's always been the person who's given me the human factor of technology. So he's kept, kept me grounded. He's always said, you know, what are you trying to do with technology? Keep asking yourself that question. You know, if you go back 25, it always takes me back 25 years. Take, take yourself back 25 years. What was the purpose of technology? And keep asking that question in every role you do. So he, he's been always a bit of a, a, a role model to me. I've got a couple of people, as I say, uh, who, who have, have met different areas of my, my brain. Um, so he's one. Um, I've got uh, a, an ex-boss of mine. Um, he, uh, he, he taught me everything uh, around technology and a bit like what I said about disseminating your experience. He gave me all of the warts and all, you know, here's how you handle people, here's how you handle uh, challenges, here's what you need to do in terms of conducting yourself. He, he, he pretty much taught me everything. He, he was a CIO I had uh, uh, many years ago. I won't embarrass him by mentioning him, but he, he was he was absolutely my mentor in life where he gave me the, the view of look at things just from a third party. That was his mantra. You know, don't look at it from yourself. Look at it from, you know, someone sitting two seats away from you. How do you conduct yourself? How, how you how you portray a message, etc. And and it's a really important lesson in life I've I've had. If you're a sort of a young, ambitious technology professional whose aspiration is to move up up to sort of CIA level, um, uh, that would be a, a, I guess your 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 probably number one piece of advice. By the sounds of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. Um, obviously, in in very recent times, we've had this um, real focus on on diversity and inclusion within within technology and. You know, partly driven by obviously like a shortage of uh, of, uh, of women in particular within within technology. Um, what sort of thing initiatives have you have you been looking at, or, or to sort of to try and drive that from your perspective and teams you've had you formed? Yeah, I, I mean, I've done a number of um, for the last probably five years. I, I've been involved in women in technology um, forums. Um, I think there's two things. Number one is is looking at why women are not coming through in technology and and as organisation what you're offering um, to to enable uh, a diverse workforce um, because I think there is there is a lot of correlation between the type of roles and and business you are and the way you sell your business that attracts certain type of people. There's obviously a little bit of you know. Um, a, a traditional when you look at the the workforce coming into technology it is heavily male orientated it always has been it's getting better but we as leaders need to do more around ensuring there are and and certainly as i said you know we need to get closer to the business so it's not just about wires and ethernet cables and and wi-fi and you know all of the all of the you know things we used to do 20 years ago which may not have appealed to the fairer sex if if that's allowed to to be said but but it's it's more the fact that there are now real exciting projects there are really exciting technology initiatives which sold in the right way don't just require pure play technology skills they require broader set of skills they they require understanding human nature being closer to you know uh the business etc as i said um so articulating and promoting that type of role is really important when when a, trying to attract uh, a diverse workforce there's also you know i, I think there's a little bit of in, inclusion as well so when we talk about diversity it's not just about you know have we got the right you know mix of men women etc uh, and a diverse workforce it's do they feel inclusive do they feel inclusive enough in a in a organization to be able to a take the role and then be stay in that role and I think inclusive inclusion is one of those things that many organizations miss as part of that diversity um, uh, metric and I think it's so hard to measure but it's so important to get right. Yeah I agree and, and I think you know, when we with our technology leadership um, conference we had last year we held it at the school and I think our objective was to try and educate more younger people that actually technology isn't just for techies, it's there's a whole range of other careers that are non-technical 
And I think that's maybe the, the demystification we need to get better at it at a younger age, which will encourage more people. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, fantastic. And biggest achievement, what would you say? Um, biggest work achievement. Um... I was recently uh, nominated for uh, CIO 100. I think that's that's a uh, massive achievement for me and my teams. Um, and and it was nominated by um, the industry as opposed to a self uh, uh, enrollment type exercise. Uh, so it's it's nice to be um, recognised. Um, I think also one of my biggest achievements was uh, one of my last organisations. Given given what I said around why technical leaders need to be more commercial. I was given uh, managing director commercial responsibility for an arm of the business. Uh, so personally, that was probably one of my biggest achievements uh, to be recognized that it's not just about technology, as you've just said, uh, it is about, you know, managing people. It's about the commercial aspect and therefore having been recognized to do that and given responsibility, which was daunting at the time, but but probably one of my biggest achievements. What um what do you get up to outside of work? Um, I'm a, a as I say, tra I love traveling. Um, I, I I've recently taken up paddleboarding uh, when the weather allows. Uh, so uh, trying to get stable on my feet is probably the best way of putting it, Richard. Um, but yeah, I I I love that family time. Um, I you know the the normal weekends uh, come and you know I love to spend a bit of time with the family, a bit of downtime. Uh, I like traveling. Uh, I'm a bit of a foodie, as I say, um, which is not great for my waistline, but but I am a bit of a foodie. Um, and and you know, seeing the sights for me, it's all, all about spending time with friends and family and and seeing the sights. Fantastic. And, and anything else? I mean, do you, what do you think? The I guess probably my last question is, you know, what do you see as the the biggest uh, opportunity for technology leaders in in the next? the next you know next few years you know to, to sort yeah. of make a difference to their businesses I, I think it's it's really a using technology to grow that top and bottom line um i think there's there's still lots as as organizations have grown and certainly post covid where models have changed um there's a lot of uh opportunity i think where organ where technology leaders can can drive the business back into new ways of working and new new business models and actually you know not being afraid to bring new ideas commercial ideas to the table i think that there's certainly that opportunity but for individual uh, leaders um i would say given they are probably one of the only few people at that top table who have a good breadth of the operations across the the business leverage that and use that you know there's a lot of discussion right now of cio to ceo transitions um yeah. and i think that that's where we're just embarking on the early days where i think that really can happen now because of the way the the businesses are structured the way cios get involved with pretty much every area of the business understand you know the commercial but also the technology and the how to deliver that commercial benefit um there is a real opportunity for for technology leaders to move into those commercial roles yeah no i completely agree completely agree fantastic well the purpose of this was just to have a, a bit of a lightning talk we could talk all, all day and i'm sure um if anyone wants to um you know get in touch i'm sure they can find you on LinkedIn. absolutely um, but uh, yeah, thanks for all your thoughts on, on that, uh, Keaton. And um, yeah, hopefully everyone found that that useful. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Thanks for the time, Richard. Pleasure.